Monday, October 15th, 1979. Dear diary, today was very hectic. Dad came home, went to pick up Michelle. We ate open presents. Michelle gave me a lot of Barbie furniture. Um, autograph book, Michelle and D. Um, breakfast, <laughs> this diary, um, Michelle bubblegum lip gloss, got stuffed animals and games from friends, um, Aaron, Renee, Jenny, and Jennifer had a good time, ate cookies, cupcakes, chocolate cupcakes. Both grandmas call, talk to them and Uncle Gary. Went to bed with all my animals and girl. <laughs> Had a good, happy birthday. Good night. Well, what is girl? What is, is it, that a doll? It was kind of like a stuffed animal <laughs> doll. <laughs> I'm not sure where it came from. <laughs> well, they have to let them know this was your birthday, right? The 15th yes. of October. My um, 10th, 10th birthday. birthday. My got my first diary. For those on YouTube, you can see it here. It came with the little lock and the key, which I no longer have. Um, I guess that's... They were such strong locks, too. Faux leather. <laughs> I remember we used to open them with a, a paper clip. And my chicken scratch handwriting in pencil. If you're on YouTube, you can see this. And oh, my goodness, my abbreviations. I didn't even spell my sister's name right. Um you know, today was hectic. H-E-A-K-D-I-C. Um, <laughs> it's a treasure that I have these diaries, these journals from when I was 10 years old. And I've been able to share them with my kids from about this age. I have continued little diaries like this in my teen years and then as I got older I kept diaries in notebooks and journals I invite you to try our podcast I'm just checking our number for this sorry <laughs> I was while you were talking I was going to cheat a little bit <laughs> and it's just the power of having these stories um, I'll read one more Dear Diary, this is October 16th, 1979. Today I went into the woods. Me and my four friends made a fort. We made a main room, M-A-N-E, with five chairs and a table out of rocks and a, and a rec room with a table and a couple you made a rec room in the woods? Yes. <laughs> we made like a house in the woods. You have a pool table there, a foosball? Or... I guess that's what we called it. Um, uh, we, it was just we, a mess. It was a rec. <laughs> no. Do um, you know what a rec room is? Like yeah, a I know. What a, room. Yeah. Um, and a couple of chairs which aren't arranged because these boys came and were wrecking our fort. I went with Renee to get Michelle and Coco. Um, when we got there, they had helped us to make the fort. When me and Jenny went home, oh my gosh, Jagger's on us. <laughs> <laughs> Writing of a 10 year old. I don't know. Then Michelle came home, went in. Oh my gosh. Something about birthday. Oh, we something about birthday cake. Probably finished it off. <laughs> Good night. I don't know. Or maybe my dad had been traveling. And so we had a celebration with the family. Um, I'm not sure. So hello, this is Don. And this is Gina. And this is podcast number 99. We're right on the cusp of 100. Here. Wow. And today we're we're talking about journaling and diaries and and the importance of them and what they can do for us and 
Before we do that, though, let's take a little break for our sponsor. Our sponsor is Q Sciences. I've been a representative for Q Sciences for over a year. I found this company through a friend and did some research and reading about these products. And I really like what I found when I learned about them, the research and time that they've put into the quality of these products to be better absorbed into the body. Things like the vitamin D spray. Our youngest was on a capsule vitamin D and yet vitamin D levels remained the same with follow-up checkups. And with the spray, it increased. It increased pretty, pretty strong. Almost double. Yeah. And I mean, we're talking her levels were maybe 20. And I think I want to say they went up to 47 or something around that range. And the, the sleep spray is another great one. It's got melatonin, 5-HTP, and I believe another herbal supplement in there. And because it's a spray, you spray it on your tongue, it gets absorbed more quickly into your body to be more effective to help you in the moment. We're using the B12 spray. We've used the vitamin C spray. They have a Q-Max product, which is a multivitamin and they also have the CBD, different uh, a variety of different uh, it's full spectrum, full spectrum oils. Yeah. They even have a THC free version. It comes in different flavors. There is a mushroom. Mm. Oh yeah, <laughs> um, armor. It's called Q Armor. It's a powder, and I get the chai flavor. Put it in my chai tea for a double chai drink. So in instead of as they say, flushing your supplements down, well, the toilet or the drain, you want to get something like this that, that's fully absorbed. It's like flushing money down the toilet, too, if you're not using a supplement that absorbs well and does well for your body. So that's what Q Science is really about. It's a good, uh, well absorbed, high nutrient product. They have multiple products. They have child specific products they now also have some facial cream products um i've been using a night cream <laughs> to um minimize the effects of sunlight and stress and aging on my skin and they have oh they have a hemp um lotion that's also a wonderful product that we've tried so check us out learn more you can find the link at our website www.focusedhealthyfamily.com. You can also go to focusedhealthyfamily.com forward slash Q sciences, the letter Q and sciences with an S at the end. With the S at the end, yes. So today I was reading from my very first journal given to me on my 10th birthday in 1979. We were living in Canton, Ohio. My sister gave it to me as a gift. And I have held on and kept, I have bins of these journals from the age of 10. And being able to pull it back up, I remember sharing with one of my kids and them seeing my handwriting and how badly I spelled things. It helped give them some confidence and to know it's okay to make mistakes and not have the best handwriting and be able to spell things. And, um, and you know, what I find interesting as I've read through some of these journals is a lot of the memories I have are because I cemented it in writing because I wrote things down. I, you know, when I pull things up, I'm like, yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Well, I think, you know, that cementing is the, also the idea of, using journaling to to plan or to you know create the future you know when you write things down it makes it, it makes it more creative more solid i guess i don't know so, yeah. i mean it, it it also cements memories which is helpful but it also helps to I, whenever you write some write down it really helps to lock it into your into your brain mm -hmm. i know for me especially even like through school I would write, take notes and I wouldn't always go back and reread them, but the fact of having written them down was um, helpful. 
Enough. And so, you know, these are great tools that we can use as adults. And they're also ways we can help our kids. You know, a kid can keep a diary and just put whatever they want in there. And that's the beauty of it. I've encouraged my kids from a young age, our, yeah, our middle child. Um, we have notebooks um, that we've recently gone through. And she literally made scribbles, like lined Pay, notebook pages <laughs> and within the lines before she could even write letters she did That's scribbles on like every single line yeah. and she would write it and she'd be talking about what she was writing and I'm sure she had thoughts in her head of what she was saying um, I remember one time she would tell me a story and I would write it down for her what the story was and um, well it's kind of like when she used to she would tell her days worth of stuff to me when I got home, you know. Oh, well, that was when she was like 10 months old and she would just babble <laughs> nonstop. <laughs> but it's empowering to be able to put what kids say into a written word. And for them, you know, they feel heard and seen when we can do that for them. With homeschooling my kids, I got like a school planner type of book where I would write down our activities and things. And it was a great way also to write down what we did to recognize and be able to look back and say, okay, we took a very uh, open, eclectic approach to education and learning and not having structured specific subjects and to be able to see, okay, we did this field trip and it incorporated all these different skills, um, whether it be learning history, um, science incorporated in there, all kinds of components of of learning and education. And so there's lots of different ideas and things that you can do with your kids. And beginning of the year is a great kickoff time. I love these journals that just have the day of the week in them. Um, so I started this on October 15th because that was when it was given to me. I, I've noticed the blank pages at the beginning, but. And, uh, you know, I wasn't consistent then. I, I mean, I did start in the January. It was like, oh, that's a good time to pull out my journal again. And so I did, that would have been 1980. Um, I mean, all I wrote in here, January 29th, 1980, almost last day by <laughs> January 30th, last day of January, almost bye bye. <laughs> um, January 31st, last day of January, dear diary today, I got sick in school. I went home early. <laughs> First day of February. <laughs> Today I did not go to school. Don't feel good. <laughs> well, you know, and, and it kind of brings up another point. Another good factor of doing this, the journaling is like you have done is it also helps you get through the anxiety or the stresses or the when you're angry. You, you know, I, I I remember some seeing some of your journals where this writing was really big and that you could you could almost feel the the feelings that were going on, the anger or whatever, the frustration that, that was behind it. And it's a that's another to me, another way of when you write down is it can help help release. you to release that that the stresses or the anxieties or the anger or whatever it might be. Yeah, when I was a kid, our dog Coco ran away. And I wrote about it in my journal. And Just yeah, it was literally, process it, it does, know, it, it helps you process. And there's a lot of fun journals out there now that you can do with your kids. One of my favorite was the Wreck This Journal oh, yeah. oh, that we got goodness. for our youngest. And it tells you to do things like stomp on it and scribble on this page. Go down the stairs. Um, rip this page out and like, you all know, different soak kinds it of in water, I think, you know, stuff like that. So yeah, it was, those are, those are cool. Um, th there's so many different ways. And so, you know, even just having a pretty notebook, a pretty colored pens. It's um, a form of expression, you know, in a way. Mm -hmm. you, you, uh, you like to get very colorful journals. I don't journal and I don't know. I, I just never had that introduced to me to the idea. I've gotten, we have done some together journals yeah. that I've bought for, and I have a, on occasion, we have, I didn't bring it in here, but um, we did those BK. We, kids. we have, well, we have the mother's heart journal and you have one too, as well, that we've filled in memories. It's kind of storing the memories now so that later that our kids can read from them when we're older. 
<laughs> well, also, like, I have the, and I don't know if we both have the, the father's, it, it, I would say it's kind of like a journal, but it, you know, it, it goes through my history of stuff. It's just what I was describing. Yeah. <laughs> well. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Well, you were talking about memories. This is more like almost kind of factual in a way, too, about you know, what you were like as a kid and and how, how you did things and like, I think it's the same journey. <laughs> <laughs> um I could I actually go could go get it. Maybe I should go get it and read something out of it. That's okay. We'll save that for next what? time so you don't you disappear. Get to read out of you. you feel like you're not <laughs> getting a chance to read and express myself. And share. Yeah. <laughs> We we can incorporate that'll be that. another day. We could we could talk about you know how to you know do another journal uh, not the journal another podcast on on writing and how writing. to well how to leave a kind of your legacy in oh, a way yeah, is that's well, what, kind of what that's about. I that's think. what those so, journals were kind of set up for. Podcast. I'll do it then. So you know, having sitting with your kids, even really young kids giving them that opportunity that we're going to do this together and not having expectation of what they can do. I know in my early teen years, I would put things, I would like cut out clips of the newspaper and write the top songs uh, and the top 40 hits and, and, and things like that. I, I have a journal where I had like, I did a bullet point list of my favorite color, my best friend, the guy I liked all these different things. Um, I remember reading that to our youngest not too long ago. Well, what were you saying? Didn't you write, like you used to write out the, the actual whole lyrics of a song too, didn't you? would sit there and listen. I think you told me you'd stop the recording. I or, did right? that a, a couple of times. Yeah, that wasn't really a journal thing per se, but back in the 70s and 80s, if you wanted to know the lyrics, well, and I got cassette tapes that didn't usually come with the lyrics in them or... Maybe I didn't even have, I just, I would record it off the radio onto my little cassette tape and then I would slowly play it back. I know I did it for Eye of the Tiger and <laughs> write out the lyrics. And of course, there's always some sections where you don't know what, yeah, they're, saying. what they're saying. So you kind of make it up. And um, yeah, to be able to to learn the lyrics of a song and to be able to remember it, um, that kind of stopping and starting and stopping and starting so writing, you know, there's so many fun ways to do things like this. We've talked about gratitude journaling before. It can be a great way to start the day or end the day, something you can do with your kids. You can have your own, you know, our example is the best teacher. And planning is another big thing, especially with it being um, January. Oh, they're in my lap. Um, I've got my new planner book <laughs> for the year. There are so many different kinds of these. Um, this is a fun one. Um, Bloom Planters, B L O O M Planners, P L A N N E R S dot com. I've ordered it online. I used to go to like the, sponsored. the office supply stores yet um, to get these. This one's got the months with calendar pages. You can look things like this up online, but it's a it's a great way. I, you know, I've got my phone, my smartphone, my tablet, and other ways of recording information. And we do a Google calendar to share events. But to me, there's something more tangible about having a physical book and I've used smaller sizes over the years you can get pocket ones um to write things down I, I just it helps me to write and to see it in writing and um you know using colorful pens little you can get little step tab colored sticker tabs to like tab the pages out um I repurposed this one last year um, I love it because it wasn't even dated at all for these pages. These are great pages. Um, so that I could, if I didn't do it for a couple of weeks, it was okay. I'd put the, this is a week, a week, week long. And on the side, you can put the dates, you can put lists of things you want to do, different things. It's got habit trackers, which is really great for trying to drink water, walking, different things you're mm -hmm. trying to incorporate daily in your life. And you check off when you do them. Um, and for a while I, I repurposed and I had tabs for working on our business related things and projects that we were working on. 
And like I said, when the kids were younger, I used one as a homeschool planner and it was a great way to, I would sit down with my kids and we would set goals. You know, what is it you'd like to work on this year or this month? And it was a great way to have a discussion with them, make a plan, check back in with it to be able to follow through. These are lifelong skills that we're not necessarily taught in traditional education of how to make plans, how to follow through, how to, you know, I want to be able to accomplish this goal. What does it take to get there? Breaking things down into steps and helping to be accountable for things. So these are great skills that we all need. <laughs> Some of us are better at than others. And there's so many different fun ways to do this. You know, there are so many online tools now. Oh, and yeah. Maybe, okay. you know, for your kids, those tools work great. They can set reminders. Well, I, what I I set up is uh, on my Google Calendar, I have, I use my seven o'clock slot on the every day. And I made a repeating one that I can, I set up one for Mondays, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I don't think I did one for Saturday. And it runs every week. So I can put in, I put in my, this kind of to do's or my things I want to do that day on what I call a task on my calendar, that seven to eight o'clock slot. I fill in all the different things to do that day. So I can go up there every day and look at, Tuesdays and look at what I want to do that day. Hmm. I can I can go ahead to three months from now, a year from now, and put stuff in to, to do for that. So I just have gotten in the habit every morning. I go, that's the first thing I, after I do my meditations and exercise, I look at my, t that, that seven o'clock slot for the, the task of the day. And it helps me to keep track of what I want to do. So if I have to do something with you, on a certain day, I can go to that day and put it in there or put it on the calendar itself. So anyway, that's my... I know that when I first met you, you used to use a planner book. You, yeah. you had certain... Um, I'm trying to remember the brand name. Of... It was Franklin Covey. Okay. And... Or Covey Franklin, whatever I could. And you would get the pages every year to refill yeah, the planner, but... like a spiral bound book. Well, you had to go through a whole... They they do it. They had a, a workshop you'd go to, to to learn how to even use it. Because <laughs> I mean, it was very detailed on how you, you know, because you could, you could copy things that you want to review and put them in a in the, in the back of it, so that you know, on this day, I need to look at this in this file. It's like had a little, almost like a small file system in the back of it. And you were very regimented for a while that you would yeah. get those planner pages. Um, when and did you? Kids when did, came along. <laughs> when did you stop? Well, you continued that for quite some well, time yeah. that I remember. I mean, life just got, it got really, you know, we had this, the challenge. And I think that's what kind of threw me off somewhat. Okay. Cause I know you always liked a physical planner book. Yeah. So I, I've gone to this system and I've been pretty religious with it. So it, it's, it's helped me to like, I, for instance, Tuesdays is kind of my day of looking over my finance, just to, reviewing my bank account, reviewing uh, my profit and loss or whatever for the, for for the year or for the day or for the week or whatever. Here, give us an example. Is it on your, can you pull it up on your phone? Uh, yeah, I could share it, I guess. Oh, I just. Share a screen. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know if I want to share screen and show my. <laughs> no, just pull it up on your phone and you can read to us an example of what, um, what things might look like for you on a particular morning, having a reminders of. So. I'm just My curious. Your, your so, so Fridays are they're supposed to be a podcast day, and so I've got review of the month put a, put on social. So, in other words, I I started doing, and I I've kind of gotten away from it. I would do a review at uh, either other every Friday or every other Friday. I'd do just a simple review of what happened that week and kind of remind them what's been going on and what's coming up and all of that, uh, and then says to post around, which me, for me means putting it out on social media, taking clips, put together groups of themed podcasts. So working on, these are things that I- Yeah, I, I was going to say, I don't need to explain them, but just kind of what correct you- Correct tags on podcasts, find more people to interview, do some off the cuff podcast. This That was based on the, um, the other podcast I did, plan out podcasts for the future. 
And then I, I have a list of topics that we could talk about. So for each day, Monday through Friday. This is Friday. So how did specific. you get to that? I'm just curious here. It's it's at the top of my okay Friday daily. It, every every morning, seven o'clock, there's this. But how does it link to something? What do you mean link to something? Well, you click on it and it links. like It's a calendar. Oh, it's, is this Google calendars? Yeah. Okay. So it's, <laughs> it's just, I said an event. That's what you did. And it's a okay. repeated event forever, basically. Okay, but, but then I each one day. day. Specific to each day. And then some of the, like, like so I'll go to Tuesdays. And here I have, you know, do reconciliations, uh, review finances. I, I should be doing my mileage IQ. I have a thing that tracks my mileage. Uh, I'm supposed to update it, which... Like I said, I, I've been trying to get better and better at doing all the things as as I've set them up. And uh, one thing I know I've talked about with kids is it helps to have routines in place because it takes a whole lot less energy to do something when it's an actual routine. Yeah. We had this ongoing sort of battle with our youngest. Her job was to unload the dishwasher in the morning, and she would spend all kinds of time arguing about it. And I'm like, okay, let's time how much time it actually takes to do this job. And it really didn't take that long. And it's like, if it's just a routine, if it's just, you come down, you, you know, you take your medicine, you eat your breakfast, you clean up, you know, um, if you have this routine in place, then you're not having to think about it. Well, yeah. And there was a one, uh, I was a workshop I went to of somebody that was time management. And one of her, her things she said is the first thing I do every morning is I have the dishwasher empty and I, that kind of stuck with me because it, it, I always do that. I, I like to do that too. It feels so much better not to have to think about that during the day. So there's certain things that, that I think are, are good to have just as routine to do it at a certain time and get them done, get them out of the way. And it helps to coordinate this with family members and it can be, you know, it can be a family planner even, um, whether it's a virtual calendar, whether it's a big calendar up on the wall where you write down so people know what's going on, what's happening. Um, well, we share calendars with Google so we know, so I can, if I set something up or want to set something up, I can look at that day and see what you're doing and what I'm doing and, and coordinate it. And, and, and with our kids too, our 15 yeah. year old has asked us to stop putting her appointments for us to stop entering them in the calendar because she wants to put them on. Otherwise they'll show up double. <laughs> well, that's a, and, that is the problem with that. It's, uh, anyway. Yeah. But being able to communicate with each other and we live a life where things are changing every day and we don't have a set schedule every day and it looks different. I know when years ago when our oldest was little and I, I did, I guess it was when I was working in home care. And so some days I had longer days and shorter days and I would let him know, didn't I put like with numbers on the refrigerator? You know, I've got three visits today to do. And so he had an idea of how long mom was going to be gone because kids like predictability. They like to know what's going to happen. Well, you know, and it it, it kind of has paid off because our middle child, if you remember when, when she had roommates, they used to have that uh, a wipe a wipe off board. And they would say when when the dogs were fed, when the cats were fed, when the dogs were let out. They and they would they kept up with it that pretty pretty well. Um, so and yeah, it's a great communication I think that's tool. We need to probably do when she moves back to the coordinating. Yeah, yeah coordinating, coordinating with each cars other. and moving cars and stuff like that. And and it can be fun too. I mean, some of these. This one I has actually like coloring pages in it, and it's got in the beginning. There's like your goals for the year, your aspirations, your desires, and. Whether you use that or not, it's okay. Yeah, we um, talked about goals at one of our podcasts too. And so it can be a great, I mean, yes, it's January as we record this and I'm sure as we air it, yet it can be done at any time of the year. You know, kicking off the school year can be a great time. They make planner books, obviously, that begin in September, ones that begin in January. I was wondering... If if we consider when I was a kid, how I remember my car book, my kind of it was a scrapbook. Okay, but would could that be a a kind of a photo journal in a way? You know, my expression, uh, my way of expressing what I was thinking and feeling was by pictures of, mm -hmm. of cars. 
And I mean, it's it's this thick. I mean, it's it's huge because I I started in like 1972, I think. So for those of you listening and not watching, oh, that's true. <laughs> Don's like the <laughs> thickness. I'm thinking of like two dictionaries. If if you could right. picture how fat a dictionary is, or take the Harry Potter books and stack up two oh. of the latest Harry Potter books. <laughs> so how um, maybe six inches? Yeah, but it's it's very thick. Like I said, because I not only went from 72 on every year I would clip out pictures of cars the newest and like I loved cars as a kid the newest and greatest models and all that but I also went back and I pulled up history and I'd find pictures of cars from the beginning to, and so it was it got very detailed I I don't know when I stopped it I'm trying to remember what what year I ended up stopping it or I guess I grew out of it or something and that's been a fun thing did you share that with my dad We've talked yes, about I did. that. I took it oh. down and showed your dad. And he got he got a kick out of it. Being he able he to loves the the cars. And reminiscing stuff. about old cars and recognizing the difference in the '57 Chevy versus. Well, yeah, that was I would I would kind of quiz him on it. He he enjoyed that too. It's okay. Do you remember this car? And he he remembered the car and he said, remember what year? And he he sometimes he was able to even in in the times when he wasn't cognitively quite all there. He still was able to pull up that and uh, yeah, that, got a joy out of it, you know. That long-term memory, yeah. So it, yeah, and the so stories that can go along with that. So putting, yeah, putting your, I guess it's about putting your thoughts down one way or the other, you know. Yeah, whether it's a picture, whether it's the words you put out, or or you're just scribbling because you're angry, you know. Either way, it's yeah. it's getting out and expressing yourself through a journal of some sort. And, you know, in addition to the journal aspect, but the planning and being able to to write, to make a plan. You know, we've talked about different kinds of gratitude journals. This is a fun little um, gratitude journal. My mom got me several years back. It's a Marie Kondo, and it's got a date. It, it goes from January through December, Regular, but yeah. it's got spots for doing it in three years. So they're very little short areas like one year two year three years oh. so that you can go back and you know write in it which is also very interesting to be able to as i'm writing yeah. gratitude this year reading back and, yeah, that's and then you're doing it day to day, you know comparing day to day that's kind of interesting and it's always but... been interesting when i've stopped and read back through and to see you know and i focus on gratitude here so even though when i've been through lots of different challenges which there particularly were many of in 2023 that I found what I appreciated from those challenges, the, the positive things from it, the the good medics that we encountered and the nurses and things like that, despite all the difficulties going on. So it's kind of interesting to read it from that perspective. And it's, you know, it's also great to be able to just journal about the frustration and the the anger and the angst, like you said, when we were in our early years of marriage and together as a couple and just when I was angry it did come out scribbling <laughs> the other fun thing to do is write with your left hand yeah that's what you sort of uh, invoke your the right side of the thought. brain and to be able to um or do it with a crayon too mm -hmm. um which is funny because I would always the notes from Santa Claus and <laughs> Tooth fairies. <laughs> I'd write right and left hand, so left handed. Wouldn't and look like yours or our letters from Harry, I, from Harry Potter. I remember one of the kids saying, "Gee, Santa Claus writes like the Easter Bunny." <laughs> <laughs> ah, so uh, the different. Yeah. The, there's so much fun that can be had, and you know, rather than seeing writing as a chore, um, there's so many fun things you can do with writing between colored pens and pencils and markers and crayons and different types of journals. My favorite are finding one with blank pages, not even the lined, just having that freedom. And see if you write up or write down, because <laughs> I tend to write upwards. And to be able to color and draw, and mm -hmm. it, it's a great tool. It's great for fine motor skills. It's just... And what's your future book to it? And uh, and then yeah you you you're if you journal like I have you know I, I can you got a lot to write on <laughs> I've got um and I'll have to read next time we discuss this topic my grandfather who uh, had a fourth grade education because he had to go to work to help his family 
started a journal when my father was born. He was a young man of maybe 21. And he kept a journal, like written from the perspective of my father as a baby. Hmm. And I have that now. My grandfather's been gone over 10 years. And just the beauty and the power um, of him writing and writing about when his sister was born and Hmm. um yeah but the, we, we do that on the, that podcast we talked about uh on my part with the father he, legacy that would be a good one to to start out so we'll we'll do that we'll look into that so love to hear your thoughts on this share things that you have done with your kids things you have yourself done um love to hear and share different ideas with you and we'd love you to share this podcast too with somebody that you know might find this a parent or or that might find this interesting please share it we'd love to have it shared with and and of course getting their comments and thoughts too check out all the things we have to offer at focused healthy family you can see our blogs our all of our podcasts our tuesday tips which you can get via email or listen to them there are shorter podcasts we air on tuesdays you can learn about the workshops and groups and one-on-one work we do with families and individuals all all at focushealthyfamily.com and remember how you speak to your children today shapes their future and yours